Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for holding this hearing and for your continued leadership on cybersecurity. You uh, brought this critical issue to the fore, and you have been steadfast in your commitment to addressing the problem. No one can deny the serious threat that we're confronting in cyberspace. Almost daily, we learn of new cyber threats and attacks targeting our government agencies and the companies that drive our economy. We must find solutions that leverage the innovation and know-how of the private sector, as well as the expertise and information held by the federal government. And given the escalating nature of the threat, we should look for solutions that will have both an immediate impact and that will remain flexible and agile into the future. In keeping with that task, in March, this committee held a joint hearing with the Homeland Security and Governmental Affairs Committee not long after the President issued his cybersecurity executive order in February. Today, we're here to examine the National Institute of Standards and Technology's implementation of that portion of the executive order pertaining to the cybersecurity partnership between the private sector and the federal government to improve best practices in cybersecurity. The feedback we have heard from many in the industry regarding NIST process has been fairly positive so far. We're also here to examine the legislation that Chairman Rockefeller and I have introduced. After soliciting feedback from industry stakeholders and our colleagues, I think this bill strikes the proper balance to ensure that what develops is industry-led and a true partnership between NIST and the private sector. It also ensures that NIST's involvement in this process are both ongoing in order to maintain the flexibility and continued innovation that is necessary to meet such a dynamic threat. Our proposed legislation also includes needed titles to improve research and development. We should not underestimate the value of R&D. As I've mentioned previously, I'm proud to note that South Dakota's own Dakota State University is one of only four schools in the nation designated by the National Security Agency as a center of academic excellence in cyber operations. Other titles of our bill improve education and workforce development as well as cybersecurity awareness and preparedness. I'm pleased that our office has worked with industry, fellow Senate colleagues, and other stakeholders to solicit and incorporate the, their feedback in crafting this legislation and will continue to do so as we move forward. By following regular order in the committees of jurisdiction, we hope to avoid the legislative impasse from last Congress and ultimately enact legislation that will make real improvement, improvements to our nation's cybersecurity. Our hearing witnesses today include the Director of NIST and representatives from the private sector who can provide this committee with their perspectives on how the current NIST process is developing. I look forward to hearing whether our legislation is a step in the right direction to provide a partnership that is truly voluntary and industry-led. I'm also pleased that the Chairman and I both recognize that an essential component of cybersecurity is strong information sharing regarding threats. Such sharing should occur both between government and industry and among private sector actors with strong liability protections. It is our hope that our colleagues on the Senate Intelligence Committee will be successful in crafting bipartisan consensus legislation that achieves these goals. As the Chair of the House Intelligence Committee has said, According to intelligence officials, allowing the government to share classified information with private companies could stop up to 90 percent of cyber attacks on U.S. networks. It is also our hope that the Senate Homeland Security Committee can similarly work in a bipartisan fashion to make needed improvements to the Federal Information Security Management Act in order to better secure our federal networks. If our committees can work to produce complementary consensus legislation, that would be a significant step forward in this area. Again, I thank the Chairman for holding this hearing. I want to thank our witnesses for being here, and we look forward to hearing your testimony. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Thurman. I would direct this to, to you, Mr. Gallagher. I want to commend you for NIST's efforts thus far in working collaborative, collaboratively with industry to address the cyber threat. We've received positive feedback from industry regarding the workshops that you've hosted and the transparency uh, of your process. The legislation that Chairman Rockefeller and I have introduced uh, <clears throat> authorizes NIST on an ongoing basis to facilitate and support the development of an industry-led and, and voluntary set of uh, standards to improve security, as we've mentioned in the opening statements. In your testimony today and previously, uh, you've also stressed the importance of the process being industry-led. And I, I'm wondering if perhaps you could elaborate on why uh, an industry-led process will be successful and create, in the end, a better product. So thank you. I think there's three major reasons why the industry leadership is essential. Uh, the first one uh, Art Covello actually touched on in his opening statement, which is the, the know-how and the capacity are largely in industry. 
and uh, embracing that is the best way to have an agile process that in fact keeps up with this technology. It's evolving very, very quickly. The other reason is uh, that having an industry-led process vastly increases the chances that the answer is compatible with business. And since the goal here is to put this into use, having a standard on a shelf is not going to help anyone, then the more we can align the, these practices with good business practices, the things that ty types of risk management that companies do anyway, the better off this will work. And the third reason is uh, it can operate at the scale of markets. Uh, the Internet information technology is, is global. And if this is a government-led effort, the answer we come up with is not going to be acceptable around the world, probably because we developed it as a government. But if industry develops it, uh, it can be internationally used, and it can harmonize efforts across markets all around the globe. And so I think from a trade and competitiveness perspective, uh, the technologies, the solutions, the software uh, work around the world. And that's, that's something that wouldn't happen unless uh, industry led the effort. And, and, and could you describe a little bit how you're working with industry um, stakeholders to ensure that the framework that you're developing uh, will be flexible, uh, performance-based, and, and also cost-effective? So the uh, carefully is sort of the, the it, this is a, so we're working as aggressively as we can to pull in existing practices where many of those features can be, have been demonstrated already. Uh, and the issue of scalability, that almost forces you to, to have a performance-based system because the things you do in a very large uh, multinational corporation are going to be very different than the things you would do in a company with five to ten employees. But the types of things, the performance you're trying to achieve, in fact, have the same goals. And the other thing that I think is quite interesting with the evolving framework is that in addition to being uh, embracing sort of risk management, in other words, this is uh, as much about what you do and as it is about the specific technical controls or things that you do to protect systems. The other thing that's coming up is uh, uh, an implementation levels. In other words, a maturity model, the notion that uh, that your thinking evolves, that in the very beginning of the process, if you don't have a lot of experience, uh, you may have a very rule-based or control-based scheme where you, these are the top things I'm going to do, these are the core behaviors we're going to you know, enforce within our company, we're going to check passwords. But as you evolve, in fact, what happens is uh, almost a security culture takes hold. It's about continuous improvement, it's about having the capacity to uh, look at what's happening in your system to adjust to that, and it becomes much less about a, a rule-following type culture and more about a continuous improvement. And that's that's being incorporated into this framework, which I think is uh, will really support implementation because it tells a company at the beginning of the process what they need to do, and that's a different set of things that a very mature company uh, would uh, be looking at. Let me I, I just uh, direct this question, if I can, to the to our industry witnesses, um, and and I'll repeat what I said. We, the feedback in, in terms of the NIST process under the EO has been generally positive, and uh, I'm curious in knowing what has been uh, your involvement or your sector's involvement in the NIST process, and if there's anything that you could suggest to the committee or to NIST, for that matter, to improve that process. Um, I, I'd be happy to start, uh, Senator. Uh, yeah, first and foremost, to, to your point about it being industry-led, uh, just to give you an idea of the resources that can be brought to bear, um, we host, RSA hosts the largest security conference in the world. We have over 300 vendors uh, that come to our, our conference every year. So you think about the scale of capability from 300 vendors. Uh, that, uh, that attend our, our conference to have an impact uh, in, in terms of developing this framework with the latest and greatest, most innovative technologies. I would also add, I've never seen a, uh, a period where there was more investment from, from venture capital and others uh, in the space because it is, uh, it is such a, a tough problem to solve. So you've got that weight of knowledge. Combined with that, um, you have the vertical industry knowledge 
of, of their being able to evaluate the risk in their environments, um, how to go about implementing the right technologies in a fashion that gives you true defense in depth. Now, on the other side of the equation, you have NIST, which has a, a, an excellent technical capability, bringing together those resources and drawing the best of it uh, to build that framework, and not doing it in a vacuum, but doing it collaboratively with both industry uh, verticals as, as well as the technology companies that, that provide the solutions. So this bill, uh, I think is, is so important because it sets the right direction to get the best results. As to your specific question, uh, RSA has, has already been working with, uh, with NIST uh, to help develop this framework. We have expertise in, in the areas of, of identity management, uh, in, in big data security analytics, uh, in encryption technology, uh, and in building out the framework uh, we bring uh, our expertise in these specific technology areas uh, to NIST and, and to the body of, uh, of work that is, is being done. I would add to that, and I pretty much agree with all the things that Art said, is that you know, the financial industry has been very invested in this process for two reasons. One, we want to make sure there's good and productive outcome, and two, because we want to improve the capabilities of the other infrastructures that we depend on. Um, and I think the key, and I mentioned this in my testimony, is this stuff for us has to be grounded in the real world. Um, one of the challenges with some of the standards process, not so much the way that NIST works, but other organizations, is they have people who are professional developers of standards who don't live in the real world. And so from the financial sector, we had to invest our experts who know this space because we want to get productive outcomes. And this has been very good at taking that input from our expertise and, our, and others they've brought to the bear. Um, because we want this framework to work, because we want to use it to improve our cybersecurity and improve the maturity. That was another thing that was mentioned, the maturity scale of the various players um, in the industry. So you have large institutions that operate on large scales like mine that need to be very mature. We also have a lot of small institutions who don't actually run most of their own infrastructure. And we need to get the service providers um, that provide them the capabilities to have this level of maturity to pretend, protect the sector overall and the nation's critical infrastructure. Senator, from the NAM point of view, um, this issue, cybersecurity, has it become increasingly important. And it has moved up uh, the corporate ladder, so to speak, and it's now a boardroom issue for many of our members. Um, a lot of our members are participating in the NIST forum and, and find these discussions very helpful and want to see the process can continue. And I think from our perspective, the fact that we're talking about voluntary stand industry-led voluntary standards and a public-private partnership are really key uh, to our support. Mr. Chairman, I just uh, appreciate very much the um, testimony of, the, of these uh, folks today, and, and I think that helps inform our process going forward. And I guess if there's a takeaway for me, and uh, in, in, in perhaps if you all want to just in the form of a you know, closing comment, but uh, is that uh, the only way that this works is if the framework um, really is good business and, and, and makes sense. And I. So uh, that's kind of what I have, I guess, derived from what I've heard you say today. Um, I think that our bill is, is uh, uh, headed in the right direction uh, based on what I've heard you say today. And there are other committees, as the chairman said, that have other jurisdictions who will have to be heard from on this. And we hope that they, the work that they do can complement what we've done here. But um, we, uh, we appreciate very much uh, your being here. And if anybody has anything they'd like to close with, I guess that's just down to us so but thank you so much for your for your time and and uh, for your uh, expertise